Thank you, Gina. Um, I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm going after they've spoken, so that helps. I might, if I can, just refer back to some of the things that have been said. And at the same time, try not repeat what's been said. Um, but it is important to start from where are we? We're at a stage where half our people aren't paying the bills that they're meant to be paying. And more critically, I think, where a quarter are saying they will not pay. And where it seems half of the politicians you hear on the radio are saying that they won't, if they're re-elected, they will never pay. And that's where we are politically. And it's not, this is not a small issue, or this is not an uncontentious, this is a deeply divisive issue that in my mind isn't just about polluted water now, it's polluting our political system. I, where I, the language I hear, it's as if we're back in the kind of 1916 again, we're fighting a land league, we're using the same language about boycott and resistance to the external enemy, when actually the treatment of our water is, is about ourselves. It's about our environment, and our environment is about how we look after ourselves. I want to quote Tommy Tiernan on this. When he, what did he say at a recent climate gathering event? He said, there's no such thing as the environment if you don't define it, including ourselves. He said, why would you have a minister of the environment? It's like having a minister for reality, he said. <laughs> and the reality, as Michael said, you say we have to get to grips with water, Barry. We're getting to grips with water, and half of it is going out through our fingers. It's the reality. And half the septic tanks we have, we can't manage the sludge. And 30% of the private water systems we have have E. coli in them. That affects us. That's, that, that's, that's the environment. It's in us. It's part of us. So we need to get this solved. We need to break away from the deeply divisive, abusive language, the pickets on the doll in time for 1916 so we don't go into fighting an external enemy that is actually ourselves. When you talk to, when, no, when you listen to people, Irish people know we have a problem. They know we need investment. I mean, they can see it with the boy notices. You can see it in Dublin when they turn off the pressure and you're there in a restaurant cleaning up the dishes and suddenly it's a trickle. Or you can tell when you've been for a swim and suddenly you feel sick because that's what's doing to us. That's why it's us, the environment. But the problem we have, and we've had this problem for a long time, is you can't see this. You can't see the solutions. Often you can't even see the problem. You can't see the pipes that we have to build. By very definition, they're underground. You can't see the scriptosporidium, even though it may be in the water. You can't see it. And if you're a minister, the kind of idea of opening up a sewage plant ain't exactly the dream front page news story. <laughs> that, and because of that lack of visibility, in a client to the Starish political environment, for decades, investment in our environment came last, came down the agenda. That's the problem we have, and we have to overcome. Um, it was never going to be easy to manage this problem. And I, listen, easy to kick the current government. I love it. And they deserve it in many instances. But this is never going to be easy. But I do think they've got it wrong in this some, some certain fundamental ways. It's important to understand, first of all, where it's coming from. And Pierce, I have to correct you. The Troika had nothing to do with this. Troika, was, there was nothing in the four-year plan. Whatever line about options in the four-year plan came as much from the Department of Finance as it came from anyone else. It did not come from anyone else. There was no one I met in Europe in that time who had a single word about how we did our water system. So to put it on, oh, it's the Troika forces in it, it's not true. Read the Tax Commission report. Read the Tax Commission report from 2008, 2009 which was the same as numerous reports we've done down through the years, recognising we have to broaden our tax base. We can't just raise all the revenue we need for public services from labour or VAT. Because that has its difficulties too. And, and, and so that's where it came from. It did change. And Barry's right when he said, my experience, I remember being on a platform, the only holy troika I saw in this, I was on a platform once in late 2010, and as you said, Barry, I had someone from the Department of Finance, from the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, and someone from Fine Gael, and suddenly I found I was arguing for the holding on to the ownership of state assets in energy. I was particularly interested in that issue. And suddenly I found that suddenly the platform was going around, falling around behind me because I had to 
Fine Gael and the Department of Finance saying, oh, it's a good idea to sell back in the new era plan. So there was a deal done in 2009, 2010, a Cork deal to sell the Borgash energy assets and compensate the company by giving them the water network. I'm not too sure, Pierce, whether doing it to ESB one way or the other makes a big... I, I, I don't see what the difference is if that's your preferred solution. But that was the deal that was done in advance of the new government, and the government comes in. And you're right as well, Barry, which has said that the previous government has said we will look at options because we wanted to look at options. But the options were completely immediately reduced when that Price Waterhouse Cooper support, the terms of reference, were changed by the incoming government with no debate, no consultation, and then we end up where we are now. They should have stopped at that point and said, let's have as big a debate as we can. Let's think about where they want to look after environment and how we, what sort of level of investment we need. Do we agree we need the investment? That's what we have to decide first of all, as you said, Michael, at the start. And then you can work out, second question, okay, how do we pay for it? They didn't do it. Phil Hogan wasn't exactly shy in going forward. And, and we ended up where we are. And Alan Kelly, God bless him, not here tonight to answer himself, but what he's done where we've ended up with a flat rate charge is the worst of all worlds. Because this has to be about conservation. And the only justification for a water charge, from my perspective, is you do have to give a signal to, for conservation because we're human beings. We can't see it. You know, we, we, we can't see the leak in the pipe. You don't put the signal in. You don't meter it. You don't manage it. Then, then, you, then you waste. And then we pay. But we pay. Someone else pays. Or we pay something. Actually, some, sometime in the future we pay. But we can't kick that water and can down the road forever and a day because we're reaching the limit on that strategy that's been applied for the last 30, 40 years. Um, I don't buy the alternative view that some way we are exceptional. Why is it that every single OECD, someone, someone please tell me why is it if every OECD country thinks that's the way you do things, what is the exception here that makes us so different or should argue that we should stand out from that crowd? Um, and Pierce, this is about the investment and about spending of money. And okay, you can say you wouldn't spend money on this or, or you'd, do it, you'd spend the public money on it. But where would we get the public money for investment in health and education and welfare that we also need to make? You know, there, it's not just a zero, it's not just an easy thing, oh, we'll definitely pay for that, we'll definitely, you say you won't make a promise. But somewhere along the line, if we promise everything, in terms of health infrastructure spending, education spending, transport spending, we need to do all these, you do need a certain limit. So, I, I, and I think... So that, that, that's the question. Where do, we, do we agree we need to raise the money? I presume yes. So where are we going to get it from? Barry, I was listening to you with intent. Because I was particularly excited when you said we need to go back to the drawing board. And I was expecting, here it comes. Here's the drawing board thinking from Fianna Fáil. And I heard you said we need to set high standards of quality. Three points of, kind of we should, we did things we all agree on. There was no drawing board thinking. I didn't hear any drawing board thinking on how you're actually going to pay for it or where the money's going to come from. Yeah, you said 10 billion. No, you said later on we get 10 billion. Fine. But, you know, let's show, us, let's show us the budget figures. What does that mean in other budget items that you're going to pay less? And, and why? Do you disagree with the tax commission strategy? Do, do, do you disagree with their analysis? Because I still stand by it and still think it broadly makes sense to have a mix, some sort of charge that is a signal to try and uh, make it waste less. And yes, use public funding. And yes, this is a public company. You're being led, both of you, it seems to me, by Paul Murphy, the Anti-Austerity Alliance. <laughs> it's my pleasure. <laughs> because they, are, they come from that militant tendency in the UK who had an amazing success in the late 80s, campaigning against the poll tax, against Margaret Thatcher. They brought down Margaret Thatcher in this thing. No wonder if you're a socialist, you say, this is the really good stuff. Let's use it and do it in Ireland, and let's, make, let's bring down the system here on a similar basis. But I fundamentally do not believe we are in the same circumstances that existed with Margaret Thatcher. One fundamental difference, there are many I could pick on. People say, or Paul Murphy says, you can't have double taxation. Fine, agreed. But the problem is, we were never spending the money we should have been spending on water, 
because of that invisibility issue I mentioned earlier on. So if you're arguing say no double taxation and you keep to the current spending, then we have a problem. What I want is additional spending. So that's not double taxation. We need new spending because we have to look after environment, which means looking after itself. That central argument, I believe, falls down. So anyway, what I want to do is propose what I think we should do to get out of this log jam and this bitter conflict that is getting worse and worse, it seems, as time goes on. Five things I would like to see us do. God. Um, put the right to water in our constitution. The right to the water campaign was absolutely right that that's a fundamental right we should recognize in our... I, I like our Republican constitution, Democratic Republic. Recognize that right, that this is not a tradable item, this is a public good, public supply company, belongs always and ever to the people. Have that referendum, 100% certain. Why not? <laughs> Secondly, put conservation at, the conservation at the center of a new charging system. Alan Kelly's system is not working. It has to go. So put in what Jack O'Connor said, a basic allowance, a good basic allowance that gives every citizen, child and adult, the needs for a basic daily living. You do not charge for your basic needs, only charge in the excess. And yes, go away from that 100 euro grant, which both the previous, uh, the two last speakers had said. Instead, give people a grant to be able to conserve, putting in water harvesting equipment. Yeah, Alan Kelly said the other day, oh, well, I give them the money, they can spend it on that. They don't. We don't. We're human beings. But what we do respond to in Ireland is grants to do the right thing. Give a grant for a home har water harvesting system and we will buy them and we will conserve that way. Secondly, a major issue in conservation. Your company needs to change or whoever's in your place because we need to change the utility model so that it's not just the consumer, or it's the supplier who is incentivized to make sure they use less water. There's no point you thinking, oh, that's great, the more water I sell or the more water that's go out there, the more revenues I get. That's not what we want. We want the less water is used, the more revenues go back into investment. And we need to change that utility model in electricity and gas as well. So that, that's a difficult job, but that's a job we have to do anyway to bring the cons conservation into everything we do in energy as well as water. Third point, key, sh key issue, where do we get the money? Listening to John McHale at the, the Fiscal Advisory Council at the National Economic Dialogue last week, there are limits. It's not easy. We can't just promise money left, right, and centre. I think we can go to Europe and use the Juncker's investment plan, which is for strategic infrastructure like this. It says explicitly for this type of investment. And I think we can use the rules that exist in, those, in the plan that borrowing for such strategic infrastructure where the state joins the European Union in making an investment can be outside the fiscal compact or other budgetary rules. We will not get that deal if we go saying, we're not doing any water charges, we've no conservation measures, we've no interest in that environmental stuff, give us the money. If we go saying, we have a strategic approach here that is centered around conservation and meets other European environmental goals, I think we can get the money, and I think we can get through that budget rule difficulties that we have. Last two. Sorry about this time, Isbert. Um, I think Irish water needs to change another way. I wouldn't just abolish it. And the costs of that, and going back in, we put in all the meters. We just let them there do nothing. I think Irish water should be a billing company and should manage the finances in a centralised way. But I think we should go, as we've done in the inland water fisheries structures, to a river catchment, a, a catchment area. And this is where we bring nature in. You manage it from the mountain where the water is collected in rainfall right down to the sea. And in doing that approach where you would have eight regional districts managing the infrastructure, you start putting nature into your plans and managing our land in a way that is truly sustainable, agriculture, industry, and domestic use. You won't get that in a single centralized company in my mind. We have to start thinking regionally and planning regionally to really make it work. Last point. We need fifth one in what our mediated solution would be, and we, meet, and we need a mediated solution in this area. We have to make sure that we put water quality into everything we do. There's no point us spending 10 billion or whatever amount on water quality, and at the same time we have an agricultural policy from Simon Coveney that says we want to double agricultural output and sure there'll be no harm to the environment. Look at what happened in New Zealand when they did the same thing. They destroyed their land, they destroyed their water, and now they're pulling back rapidly because they realize the environment is important. I wish Alan Kelly was here. Because what's he doing saying, on the one hand, we have to invest in Irish water, and on the other hand, saying, 
people don't need those regulations for new buildings. They're getting in the way of building development. As if we learned nothing. That all those septic tanks, had we designed them right from the start, we meant we wouldn't have to pay such a charge in cleaning it up. And last but not least, Richard Bruton, Department of Enterprise. And I think I heard you, Port Sinis, this is an opportunity. If we invest in water, we can create loads of jobs. Yes, by increasing the supply of water, you provide for industrial development. That's true. But the difficulty and the problem we've had in our politics is we never considered the environmental side, the other end of the pipeline. No one's rooting for the pollution end because there's no jobs in it. So we need to make sure the Department of Enterprise realizes it's not just about the supply, it's also about managing the waste. That's the sort of shift and change we need to make at national policy to start taking our environment seriously, to start thinking long term, and seeing that the environment is us, and we need to start working together to solve this problem rather than fighting each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you have you have just got it.